Hi friends, I'm Scott Giles, minister and hypnotist, and welcome to Power Talk, my video blog where I cover topics that interest me, focusing on how you can use the power of your mind to take control of your life. If you want to know more about my professional work or sign up for my free e-newsletter, Powerlines, check out my website, which I'll tag in the description. Well, today I want to talk about how you can win any argument. Seriously. Now, my advice on this will boil down to the reality that it is best to not argue with someone because Research shows that argumentation is not how attitude change occurs. If you want to convince someone that they are mistaken, arguing with them is about the least effective thing you can do. But I'm going to talk about what is the effective thing you can do, and that may surprise you. Now let me add one caveat. I'm trained as a philosopher, two degrees in that discipline. Now, if you're in a philosophical forum, such as a class or a debate club, well, that's different. In that sort of setting, people are going up against each other with argumentation in a way that qualifies as sort of a good spirited sport. The winner is determined by principles of logic, rhetoric, and persuasion, usually by some jury of judges. In this very limited, particular sport-like area, argumentation is fine, and there can be a clear winner. And this sort of debate does change mind. Socrates figured this out decades ago when he would encourage his students to good-naturedly debate each other as a way of honing ideas. But for most of us, that's not the situation we're in when we wind up in an argument. What happens to most of us is that there is a disagreement about something and the parties involved aggressively assert themselves, trying to get other people to go along with their way of doing things. Now, sometimes this is appropriate. If you're in the military, you may respectfully disagree with someone who outranks you, but they will have the final say. So too, in a hierarchical organization like a professional kitchen, second cooks do not try to win arguments with the chef, or a business, one doesn't aggressively argue with one's superior. Limited argumentation may occur in such settings, but it's going to be phrased respectfully and politely. But most of the arguments people get into with someone are not of that character. They're going to be characterized by a certain amount of heat. Friends argue about who is the best football player. Parents argue about what color they're going to paint the nursery. Lovers argue about the limits of faithfulness and jealousy. People will argue about what they claim is a fact or an alternative fact. And some of these things will generate a lot of emotion. And logic, respect, and reason can get left behind. Now, I think it's important to remember that there's nothing wrong with passion or deeply held convictions. A life that is being well-lived should have both. And as we live our lives in relationships with other people, we're going to encounter the reality that other people also have their own passions and deeply held convictions, so some degree of dissimilarity is inevitable. When that surfaces, the task becomes to figure out how to deal with it. And fighting about it never helps. Let me say that again. Fighting about it never helps. Anger, shaming, threats, the silent treatment. None of these things ever work 
to change another person's mind. All that happens is they dig in, sometimes double down, and just begin to harbor resentment. And that's toxic in a relationship. Even if they give up the fight, if resentment gets going, everyone has lost. And here's the thing. This is about how the human brain is structured. The outer shell of the brain, called the cortex, is where higher thought, like reasoning, principles of fairness, empathy, compassion, and so on, arise. The midbrain, called the limbic system, is where emotion is localized. Well, within the brain, there is a primitive survival mechanism, often called the fight or flight response. When faced with a threat or something perceived as a threat, primitive parts of the brain activate. They're there to prepare you to fight a physical threat or to flee a physical threat. And they do this by activating a response that diminishes blood flow to the cortex where reasoning and logic live and redirecting that blood flow into the limbic system where your emotions live. And because the chemicals released in your body by fear and panic are going to boost your metabolism and help you flee a threat or engage in combat with it, this has evolved over time. But it doesn't help you if this happens when you're arguing with someone, such as an intimate partner, there you really need to be tapping into your ability to be reasonable and fair, not to get into an emotional state where you become unreasonable and illogical. And that is why arguing is almost always a mistake. Because what happens is the people in the argument become unreasonable, logic goes by the wayside, and good solutions become almost impossible to find. Now, in my own life, as far as possible, and it isn't always possible because other people can be unreasonable, but as far as possible, I always try to deflect disagreements that are emotionally charged and return to them when people are calmer, as in, Let's all sleep on this and come back tomorrow to talk. Or, we've heard each other out, that's a good thing. Let's go think about what we've heard and we'll take this up again at time certain. That is always the best way to proceed. If you try to do this, you will find some people will not cooperate. They want to pick a fight. And they do this because they know that if they get other people angry, it might allow them to pull a fast one. We often see this in membership meetings where someone will just try to get others riled up so they can propose some self-serving idea that passes in the heat of the moment. It's only later that people realize they've been had. Therefore, one of my principles is to remember that only weak people pick fights. And they do that because they know if they raise the issue when everyone was calm, they wouldn't carry the day. Another thing to bear in mind is that it's okay that some people will just be in a place of profound disagreement with others. People have different political beliefs, different religious and spiritual beliefs, different ideas of fairness or roles in society, and they're unlikely to reconsider any of that because we want them to. In such circumstances, trying to agree to disagree, or as we sometimes say, to disagree without being disagreeable, is the best course where possible. And it isn't always possible, in which case let me commend to you a poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay when she said, feed a cold, starve a fever, never argue with a true believer. 
it's good advice because typically true believers when they argue aren't really listening to you they're just waiting for you to stop talking so they can start but if you do all this let passion and emotions calm before issues are addressed not fall for the bait put forward by a weak person who wants to pick a fight and know that it's pointless to belabor something where the other person will never change, you will actually win most arguments. A final tip. Research shows that the last person to speak in a forum where ideas are being discussed is often the one whose ideas will carry the day. And in a tense situation, people who are the calmest are almost always perceived as the wisest and most effective. Take those additional tools and use them to win every argument. Hey, thank you for your time and attention today. I'll be back next week with another talk on a different subject. I'd like to invite you to join me. It helps me a lot if you tell others about my videos, so please like, share, and subscribe. If you're wondering if I can be of help to you, feel free to reach out through my website for a free no-obligation screening call, and we'll talk about it. Have a great week.